And now, What's My Line? Brought to you by Stop It Spray Deodorant. Poof, there goes perspiration. Poof Deodorant Body Powder, the body powder you spray. The Nest Shampoo, the new flowing cream shampoo. All in the first truly functional cosmetic containers. Far easier to use. All created by Dr. Jules Montagnier, the famous cosmetic chemist. Time now to enjoy What's My Line? Now, let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in the New York Journal American and papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. And on my left, the brilliant and charming young humorist, Mr. Steve Allen. Thank you, Dorothy. Thank you. And on my left, uh, one of the lovely ladies of radio and television who just, as you know, returned from London and is already off tomorrow night where she opens in Philadelphia in The Road to Rome, Arlene Francis. Thank you. I'm very glad to be back, I am. And on my left, a gentleman whose uh, articles on Marilyn Monroe in the new July Esquire is going to bring back the long, low whistle, Mr. Bennett Cerf. <laughs> I'm very glad to have you back. I am. Thank you. It is my article that's bringing back the low whistle. It's the pictures of Marilyn around the article. I see. And speaking of, uh, of low whistles, we have on our left not only a wonderful newscaster and panel moderator, but he brings back the low whistles on the male side, Mr. John Charles Daly. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line, presented by Stopette. <coughs> Pardon me, once again tonight, with all of the family back home from the coronation, we're going to have some guests who will come close up to the cameras and bring with them, we trust, some occupations that will give the panel some trouble, so that the guests will leave with some prizes. We'll also have a famous guest challenger before the panel a bit later on, but now let's get underway. Let's let the experts meet our first challenger, whose job has to be spotted. Will you sign in, please, ma'am? Yolanda, Yolanda Reed, is that right? Is it Miss or Mrs? Mrs. Mrs. Reed, would you be good enough to tell us first of all where you're from? Perryville, Pennsylvania. Perryville, Pennsylvania. Well, it's nice to have you with us, and we have some New Yorkers we want you to meet. So would you walk down in front of the panel, please? How are you doing, Miss Reed? All right, Mrs. Reed, now if you'll join us over here, as I think you probably know, on the basis of this rather quick look at you, which the panel has had, and the quick look that you've had at the panel, we give them one free guess as to what your line might be, and we always begin the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. I think Mrs. Reed operates a motel. A motel, Mr. Allen. I think Mrs. Reed makes butterscotch. Miss <laughs> Francis. I think Mrs. Reed runs a reducing parlor. Mr. Sir. I think she manufactures castanets. <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. Interesting answers, but none of them right. So we'll let our viewers at home have a further look at Mrs. Reed. At the same time, we'll tell them what her line is. <laughs> well, Mrs. Reed, the panel has got to dig. I think you know what the uh, rules are. Every time you get a no answer from the panel, why, we uh, rack up $5 here, 10 of these no's, and you have won the game. Mrs. Reed is self-employed. With that, let's begin the general questioning with um, Steve Allen. Hmm. <laughs> this reaction, she must play second base for the Dodgers. <laughs> uh, is there a service of any kind connected with your work? Yes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, might I ever come to you for these services? I might. Uh, it evidently seems that uh, it might. Yeah, I you see. might. Well, that seems to amuse the audience. Would it? Uh, could it ever make me happy? <laughs> could. Uh, might it change me in any way? What do you mean by that, uh, Mr. Allen? What do you mean? What do I mean? <laughs> what do you mean by what I mean? You don't mean what you think you mean. Uh, would it uh, change me in any little way at all? <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes, I think so. It would. 
Uh, would it possibly change my appearance? <laughs> I assume from the audience reaction that changing people's appearance is not your primary function, is that right? <laughs> yes, that is not the primary function, no. Yes. All right. Um, might what you do then uh, uh, change or affect people's health? Yes. It might, yes. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Well, would this change, uh, whatever it is, be something that would be immediately apparent to my friends if... Uh... <laughs> are you talking about the change... Are you talking about the change in health or the change in appearance or the change in what? Well, uh, I'm talking about the apparent change. The whatever. change in, a, in, a, in, in an apparent uh, change. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll have a small conference. Have a, have a big one. I have nothing on my mind. <laughs> <coughs> Off they go into the wild blue yonder. And now here they come back with the latest returns. Since we're somewhat confused about what it is you're trying to get at, we'll give you a qualified yes. Well, I'll just take a stab at it. Uh, might nearsighted people ever come to you? <laughs> Thanks a lot, and I wonder why. <laughs> uh, could what you do improve my eyesight at all? <laughs> I have no answer. One down and nine to go, Miss Francis. Do you uh, work outdoors at all, Mrs. Reed? Sometimes. Uh, is there... Uh, any gaiety or hilarity in any way connected with the kind of work you do? Do people feel very gay about the kind of job you uh, have? It inspires gaiety in the audience. Would it inspire it in the people that might come to you? Well, I'm, I, I think I'd say this, and I think Mrs. agreed with me, that uh, Mrs. Reed would agree that in the process of her services, it's possible that there might be uh, the implementation of... of uh, some kind of games or things like that, which would, you know, I mean... Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, does the... Uh, uh, do you ever touch the people you come into contact with? No. No, not for the purposes of the service. That's two down at eight to go, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Reed, is there any kind of a liquid connected with what you do? <laughs> No. No, not, not specifically. Not, not no, to the, we all absorb a certain amount of water every day, but we'll set that down. That's Wasn't three thinking of water. Ago, Ms. Uh, could women as well as men like Steve enjoy your services? Yes. <laughs> Might I ever become involved with what you do? Yes. Would it be more usual for grown-ups to seek your services or come in contact with you than children? Would it be, would it be more likely grown-ups than children? Yes. I would, think yes. So, yes. Uh, would both sexes ever be connected with you at the same time or connected with your services? Yes. Yes. You sometimes perform your services indoors? Yes. Do uh, more than one or two people at a time ever watch you do what you're doing? Mm, yes. <laughs> uh, is it customary for you to perform your services with, say, a group of uh, 10 or 20 people looking on? Mm, yes. Yes. Could be. yes. Are they... Uh, do you, however, perform your services for one specific person at a time, even though others might be watching. No. No, I don't think so. That's four down and six to go, Mr. Allen. Uh, is there some, something physical in what you do? I mean, out of the ordinary, such as more than typewriting or something of that sort. No. No, I don't think so. Five down and five to go, Miss Francis. Uh, does your uh, place have any, or wherever you, it is you work, uh, would it have anything to do with a health resort of any kind? Does health really come into it? in an important way. Yes. I think so. Yes. Uh, would people that are at your place go there, uh, at st would it be a seasonal kind of place? <laughs> I mean, would, they, would you do 
better business, let us say, in the spring or the summer than you might do in the winter. Yes. Yeah, I would think so. Winter, we could, I think, more or less rule out. If, you know, if no. it was a severe winter, couldn't we? Yeah. Are the people that come to you dressed, uh, uh, uh... <gasps> what you might say, be dressed at all? <laughs> uh, are they not dressed at all? When they come, I mean, we got such a laugh out of the way they might be dressed that I thought maybe they might not be. <laughs> <laughs> no, but actually not for myself. I think we'd have to give you a yes. Well, do you have... Uh... Dorothy, I don't think you'd go. <laughs> I... <laughs> I go with her, I tell you that. <laughs> Do you operate some sort of a nudist colony? Yeah. Actually, Mrs. Reed, I think, would accept that general classification, but she prefers the designation a nudist park. That's actually what she runs. A, a, down a, in a nudist colony is no longer polite. It's a nudist park resort. Oh, when you park, park, it's all right. It's an airport. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, Mrs. Reed, let's see. You did fairly well with the prizes, <laughs> and may we thank you for being our guest and what's my life. It's nice to meet you. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. All right, let's see what we can do with another challenger. Would you sign in, please, ma'am? <laughs> We're now... Davis. Is that right? <laughs> Miss? Mrs. Davis, and where are you from, Mrs. Davis? From Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, fine. There's our Peach Street Street right there. Would you walk down Peach Street Street for me, please? Peach Street Street. <laughs> all right, Mrs. Davis, now if you'll come over here and join me, I think that you know at this point we always give the panel one free wild happy guess as to what your line may be, and we always begin those guesses with Dorothy Kilgallen. I think she's a personnel manager. A personnel manager, Mr. Allen. I think she uh, shaves the fuzz off peaches. Miss Francis. <laughs> I think she grows magnolia trees. Mr. Sir. I think she's a hostess for American Airlines. No, I'm afraid nobody has it. We'll let our viewers have a further look at Mrs. Davis. At the same time, we'll tell them what her line is. But the panel's up to date. All right, Mrs. Davis, I think the rules are familiar to you. No answer, five dollars, ten no's. Boing, you won the game. You all ready to go now? All right, Mrs. Davis is self-employed. With that, let's begin the general questioning with Arlene Francis. Do you work with your hands, Mrs. Davis? Yes. To some degree, yes. Do you have to have uh, training for your job? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Davis, I'm correct when I assume you have nothing whatever to do with the nudist colony. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are correct. correct. Do you work indoors? Sometimes. Uh, do you, are you connect, connected in some way with the product? Yes. Is your product connected with you? Would the product be something that is uh, made in Atlanta? No. That would make it two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Is the product something that might be used in the home? No. No, that wouldn't be used in the home. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Allen. Is it larger than a bread box? <laughs> could be. It could be. It could be. Sometimes it is, yes. Is it metal at all? Is metal in its makeup? No, no. Six. That would be four down and six to go, Miss Francis. Is this product found out of doors? Yes. Is it, uh, is it a product that has ever been or is now alive? No. No, I don't think so. That makes it five down and five to go, Mr. Sir. Does this product grow? No. Makes it six down and four to go, Miss Kilgallen. Is this product used by human beings? Yes. Is it used by human beings for some utilitarian purpose rather than for pure enjoyment? No. That makes it seven down and three to go, Mr. Allen. It is made then of some mineral matter other than metal, is that correct? Yes. There is mineral in it, yes. Um, is this mineral perhaps uh, some form of stone? Some form of stone, did you say? Yes. Ah, it makes it eight down and two to go, Miss Francis. Is it anything that might be found on or near water? No. Well, that could be. The first of all, it would be possible to find the product on or near water, yes. 
Uh, you say it is for pleasure, is it? Yes. Uh, is it found at holiday resorts? Yes. Does it have anything to do with exercise of any kind? No. No, I don't think so. Nine down and one to go, Mr. Sir. Can this product ever be taken internally? Oh, no. <laughs> Ten down and no more to go, and as Mrs. Davis says, she wouldn't want to take it internally because Mrs. Davis sells fireworks. Oh, well, they're very good. <laughs> now, what Bennett Smith would have you believe is that fireworks are good with a little sugar and cream on them in the morning for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Snap, crackle, pop. But well, Mrs. Davis, you have won the full prize of fifty dollars from Stop It, and our thanks for being our guest in What's My Line. Nice to have you with us. Good night. So now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity. My friends on the panel would know our guest immediately, so they have been provided with blindfolds. Are they all in place, panel? Yes. Mm -hmm. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? over here as you know panel in the case of our mystery celebrity we always dispense with preliminaries get right down to the general questioning which we will begin with miss dorothy kilgallen are you in any form of the entertainment business i would say not one down and nine to go mr allen are you perhaps closer to the political arena i would say so uh, am i correct in guessing that you are not however a politician well, what is a politician, Mr. Allen? <laughs> There's a hard one for you, Steve. This may take a little time. <laughs> Friends, I'm glad you asked me that. <laughs> a politician... Is a man who... Is a man... No, I'm sorry, John. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, are you something other than, say, a, an office holder? Something other than an office holder? By which you mean appointed office yeah, holder? Yeah, like I a think. governor or a senator or a congresswoman or something. You, are you asking now... Uh, are you something other than those things I mentioned or something pretty close to them? Something other than a governor, senator, congressman, or something like that. That makes it two down and eight to go. Thank you very much. Miss <laughs> Preston. Huh? Oh, then you are something more like a governor, a senator, or a congresswoman. Yes. Are you elected to office? Yes. Yes. Um, do you represent... Hmm... Uh, do you represent one of the largest states in the Union? No. No, I don't think so. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Are you a member of the United States uh, House of Representatives? No. Four down and six to go, Miss Gilgallan. Well, do you represent one of the smaller but mightier states of the Union? <laughs> yes. Is it by any chance the great state of Maine? <laughs> yes. Are you the senator from Maine? Are you all right? Mrs. Smith? That's okay. right. Margaret J. Smith, senator from Maine. Thank you. It's so nice to have had you with us. Would you say hello to the panel? <laughs> can do with another challenger. Will you sign in, please, ma'am? Eileen Catro, is that right? <laughs> is it Miss or Mrs.? Miss. Mrs. Catro, and where are you from? Mrs. Jacksonville, Florida. Jacksonville, Florida. Well, it's nice of you to come this far to see us. And you see, you have some friends in the house, so I'll send you over to meet some more friends. The panel, would you walk down in front of the panel, please? Shake hands, Mr. Tatron. Thank you. All right, Mrs. Tatro, now if you'd come over here and join me. At this point, on the basis of your handwriting, what you've said, how you said it, and that small hike that you took, we give the panel one free guess as to what your line may be. And we always begin the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. I think she manages a hotel. Manages a hotel, Mr. Allen. I think she's a grapefruit grater. Miss Francis. I think she's the head of the welcome wagon outfit. <laughs> Mr. Sir. And she does have something to do with the Pensacola Naval Station. 
Well, I'm afraid nobody has it, so we'll let our viewers at home have a further look at Miss Ta Mrs. Tatron. At the same time, we'll tell them what her light is. The panel has got to dig, Mrs. Tetro. This is the roster board here. I think you know what happens. Every no answer, we penalize them. We keep the record up here, 10 no's, and you have won the game, all right? Uh, Mrs. Tetro is self-employed. With that, we'll begin the general questioning with Mr. Bennett, sir. Mrs. Tetro, is there a product involved in what no. you do? No. That's one down and nine to go. Yes, tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Gilgallis. Then you deal in services, Mrs. Yes. Tetro. Are your services applicable to both men and women? Yes. Uh, is it something that they enjoy? Yes. And do they pay you directly for this service? Yes. You are your own entrepreneur? I yes. beg your pardon? <laughs> uh, do you have an establishment of your own? Yes. Of some kind? And you perform your services in this establishment? Yes. Are they performed indoors? Yes. And uh, do you usually take care of more than one person at a time? Sometimes. Can your uh, meetings or sessions or whatever they are be co-educational? Yes. Here we go again. Uh, uh, would a husband and wife ever come to you? Yes. Would you be more inclined to deal with grown-ups than children? Yes. Do you come into physical contact with the people you deal with? Sometimes. Do you also talk to them? Yes. Do you give any kind of advice? Sometimes. Do you, do you give any kind of instruction? No. No, not instruction. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Allen. Does what you do improve them in any way? Ah, uh, that's a very interesting question. We'll have a small conference, if you don't mind. Pretend you're stupid when you're smart. <laughs> Nice-looking chap, too, don't you think? Well, right, so. We'll give you a qualified yes. Actually, it could improve them in some way. It would depend, uh, certainly, to some degree, upon a subjective interpretation of the form and nature of the service and uh, the specific circumstances under which it was taken. <laughs> All right, Mr. Allen. Well, that goes without saying. <laughs> Does Do you ever deal with animals? No. <laughs> Three thousand seven to go, Miss Pansy. Would you be considered a professional woman? Yes. Would you have to have formal training for your job? Uh, some training, yes. Well, uh, now, I, I think I, I want to be perfectly fair with you, uh, Mrs. Tetro. Actually, as we use the word formal in our connotation, it would be I'm going no. to get a no. That's right. Couldn't That's we use Mrs. Tetro's on account of she's from the South? And yes, of course, <laughs> honey. That's four down and six to go, Mr. Fair. Mrs. Tetro, do you ever have anything to do with tourists who flock down to Florida? Yes. Uh, would you say that your work was principally connected with vacationers? No. No, I wouldn't think so. Five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. Is there a spiritual aspect to your work? No. Um, wait a minute, I've got to have a small comfort. <laughs> you mean is she a bartender? <laughs> <laughs> By, you, by spiritual, do you mean having application to mental processes rather than um, just ephemeral things? No, uh, I mean anything that is not physical. Oh, well, in that basis, yes. Go ahead, Miss Kilgallen. Oh, boy. And you have one minute to go. Let me see. Uh, well, now, is there anything inspirational about what you do? Yes. Uh, people are inclined to um, feel better or yes. perhaps be better if they apply what you... Do or tell them subjectively? Yes. Do you show them anything uh, as well as talk to them? Is there anything um, illustrative about what you do? No. I wouldn't think so, Miss Dorothy. That's six down and four to go. Mr. Allen, you have time for about two quick questions. My time is up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you some sort of a marriage counselor? No. no. That makes are you in the... Uh, da -da 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 to go. Uh, are you something like an evangelist or a traveling minister? Or no. That makes no. it eight down and two to go, and we ran out of time, so it's ten down and no more to go by default. And Mrs. Tetro is a fortune teller, and you were right around the edge all the time, but oh. you never quite got to it, and you win the full prize, and thanks for being our guest. That's the thing. In just a moment, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to give you a preview look at one of our guests whose line our panel is going to be asked to try and identify on next week's program, but first, Here's some excellent advice. 
Next week at this same time, our panel of experts will be asked, what's my line by this man? Would you know what his occupation is? Could you possibly tell what his line is? Well, for questions such as these, the answers that go to them, be sure and join us again next Sunday night at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time, when once again, Stop It invites you to play What's My Line. For other localities, check your local listings for the date and the time of our weekly series. And don't forget, on CBS Radio on Wednesday nights, a new, entirely different What's My Line program. Till we see you again, this is John Daly saying good night, Miss Dorothy. Good night, Steve. Good night and good luck in Philadelphia, Arlene. Thank you, Steve. Good night, Bennett. We should have had Mrs. Taper look at our palms. <laughs> good night, John. <laughs> and good night, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being with us on What's My Line. <laughs> This has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Codman production in association with the CBS Television Network.